page 18, letter number four. Dear Michael Collins, there is one other important person in my life you should know about. Buster Whitaker is my next door neighbor and best friend, all rolled into one. Has been since his family moved in there when we were both five, so half our lives. The movers had barely unpacked their sofa when Buster yelled over, Hey, you want to play? And I yelled back, Okay. And that, as they say, was that. Nobody, including me, knows what Buster's real name is. Well, obviously his family does, but outside of them? Buster says it's so awful. If people heard it, they would just laugh and laugh. I don't think he realizes, but I would never laugh at Buster because he is the finest person I know. Also, what name could be so awful that Buster is an improvement on it? One thing's for certain. It's a crime against the universe that Buster and I have never been in the same class. This means that during the school year, we have never been together outside of lunch and recess. So he wasn't in Mrs. Collins' class this past year, which is a shame because I know he never would have laughed at me when I said you were the best one. The good news is that now that it's summer vacation, Buster and I are able to be together from the time we get up in the morning until dinner time and sometimes even beyond. I will give you an example of what a summer day with Buster is like. Today, I get up at seven, brush my teeth, get dressed in orange shorts and a matching top and go downstairs for breakfast, which is Cap'n Crunch. I do not care for Cap'n Crunch as much as some other cereals, but my mom says it's better for me than Fruit Loops which is my favorite. Fruit Loops are just so much more colorful. And then after they soak in the milk for a bit, it is like having a bowl full of rainbow, plus lots of sugar. Can I go over to Buster's? I asked my mom just as soon as the bowl is empty. My dad had already left for work. I don't see why not, mom says, so long as you two don't spend the entire day cooped up indoors. I have learned that being cooped up indoors is something that adults are fiercely against kids doing, even though it is something adults do all the time. For example, after school in the winter, we have to put on our snowsuits and go outside to play, no matter how cold it is. This is the case even when we build an igloo and the snow somehow gets between our snow pants and our boots and then trickles down in our, into our socks so our toes freeze and our feet feel like blocks of ice. We have to play outside until it gets dark. The cocoa afterwards is good, but sometimes I think it is hardly worth the price of ice block feet. Fall and spring aren't too bad, but really summer is no better than winter. You just can't escape the heat. By late morning, even the shade doesn't help much. And at night, it is so hard to sleep. In my house, we have two ways to get cool air. There's a portable fan that gets moved from room to room, depending on who's doing what. So if my mom is cooking, it is going to be in the kitchen. And when we eat dinner, it gets moved to the dining room. The other way to get cool is by the air conditioner that is in the window of my parents' bedroom. Sometimes, when it is still boiling hot by bedtime, they let me put my sleeping bag on their bedroom floor. It's like camping without the annoyance of mosquitoes or the threat of bears, which I think you will agree is quite an improvement. Do they have any air conditioners at NASA? I believe it gets pretty hot in those spacesuits you astronauts have to wear. I think if I had to wear one of those, I would just die of heat prostration which is something my mother says can happen to people and makes me wonder why adults are always so eager to send kids out into the hot sun in the summer. Buster's family is putting in a pool right in the ground. Sometimes we sit outside and watch the men working, digging the big hole. But Buster's mom says the pool will not be finished for quite some time. If you ask me, they should have started this project earlier. It would be nice to have cool water to jump into on a hot day like today. If we are lucky, in the afternoon, Buster's mom will let us turn on the garden hose and spray each other. But for now, on my way over to Buster's house, which is where we spend most of our days, it is just hot, hot, hot. When I knock on the door, Mrs. Whitaker opens it and says, Hi, Mammy. Mrs. Whitaker is Buster's mom. 
Instead of Bermuda shorts, Mrs. Whitaker favors harem pants and hot pants. And I don't think she's met a paisley print yet that she doesn't like. Instead of pearls and plaids, when, when you see Mrs. Whitaker, what you get are pinks and greens and oranges and the occasional swirling pattern that can make a Pearson feel dizzy. I know all the ladies like my mom go to the salon to get their hair done. And Mrs. Whitaker does too. The salon is called Andre's, but no one's hair looks like Miss Whitaker's. It is black, just like Buster's, but hers is high and poofy, except for the very ends, which flip upward. It is called a bouffant hairdo. My mom sometimes wears one, but Mrs. Whitaker's is the bouffantiest, and my mom says no one should wear her hair teased up as high as Mrs. Whitaker does. My mom says it's tacky. Between you and me, though, I like it. Then there's the question of her makeup. My dad says only Cleopatra should wear the eye makeup like Cleopatra and don't get him started on the white lipstick. My dad says Mrs. Whitaker dresses like she thinks she's still a teenager and that even teenagers shouldn't wear the things Mrs. Whitaker does. But she always has been only kind in the years I've known her and that is good enough for me. Buster has a dad too, but we don't see too much of him. He commutes to work. Before Buster's bedtime got changed to 9.30 on school nights, most nights Buster's dad got home so late Buster wouldn't see him at all. He told me that on the weekends, his dad would look at him over his coffee at the breakfast table and say, who are you again? Hello, Mrs. Whitaker, I say now, returning her greeting. Is Buster up yet? He sure is. She holds open the screen door for me. You know where to find him. Thank you, ma'am, I say as I pass her, hearing the door shut behind me as I race down the stairs to the basement. It has a linoleum floor that stays cool no matter how hot it is outside. Because of that, it's like square tiles of heaven. And it's where Buster and I can almost always be found in the summer until we get kicked outside by his mom. What you doing? I ask Buster. Reading. This is hardly a surprise. Buster is lying on the linoleum, his back against a cushion he's pulled from the ratty old couch, and there is a book propped up on his stomach. It's hardly a surprise because Buster is almost always reading a book. Buster says that everything that has ever happened in the world and anything a person could ever want to know about the world can be found in books. Even though I'm itching for the day to get started, I wait patiently as Buster finishes his page. Since he's my best friend, I know all his habits, and I know he hates to put aside a book before he's finished the page he's on. Me? I don't mind if I have to put the book mark in if I'm only halfway down the page, or even seven-eighths. But, Buster? If the doorbell rings and he's in the middle of a page and his mother yells, Buster, can you get that please? My hands are all greasy from ground beef. Buster will get up from wherever he's sitting, nose still in the book, never once tearing his eyes from the words, and go open the door. I know because I've seen this for myself. I have tried to impress upon him how reckless his behavior is. He doesn't even look out the side window first. How does he know that whoever he's letting into his house isn't some kind of criminal? But that doesn't bother Buster. Buster's just going to do what Buster's going to do. Aside from regular books, Buster is also a huge fan of comic books. Batman and Superman in particular. I think if Buster had to make a choice between being able to have his own utility belt with items like a bat-shaped grappling hook and cables strong enough to help you climb the side of a size skyscraper or being faster than a speeding bullet and more powerful than a locomotive, and able to leap tall buildings with a single bound, that would be a very hard choice for Buster to make. When Buster's at a good place to set his book aside, he looks up, and that's when I get to see his eyes, which are just the right shade of brown. What do you want to do today, he asks. I shrug. I don't know. We could ride our bikes to the library, Buster says. The library is pretty much Buster's favorite place in the whole entire universe. I shake my head hard to show I mean business. Too hot, I say. We could stay down here and play with matchbox cars, Buster says. I shrug again. Okay, 
So that's what we do. We play with matchbox cars until mid-morning when Mrs. Whitaker yells from upstairs for us to come have some high C. When we get upstairs, her back is to us and she's standing at the door, peering out into the yard with one hand over her eyes like a visor against the sun. We startle her and she turns. Oh, I thought you kids were outside. So of course, after the high C, that is when she tells us we need to go. We lie under the biggest shade tree they've got, the grass underneath it scratching at any exposed skin. We watch the men work on the pool. We talk about life. Buster brings his book. Sometimes he reads quietly to himself while I keep watching the men and thinking my thoughts. Other times he reads the good parts out loud to me. I do think I'd like the good parts better if I knew what the story was. We do these things until we're called for lunch, often peanut butter and jelly, although today it is bologna and mayo, and we do them after lunch too. On a typical day, if we are patient enough, eventually Mrs. Whitaker will call, what are you kids doing outside? It's too hot out there. Then she will let us come in and watch TV. We watch game shows, and if Superman is on anywhere, of course we watch that, even though it's an old show and therefore in black and white, unlike Batman, which of course, as I'm sure you know, comes in color. I only know this from Buster's TV, since ours is still only black and white. I'll bet you have a color TV, being an astronaut and all. Sometimes Mrs. Whitaker sits with us, and then we watch As the World Turns, or another of what she calls My Stories, which is just a fancy way to say soap operas. My mom says they rot your brain, but so far, my brain's still feeling pretty good. When Michael and Claire on As the World Turns got divorced, and Michael said he'd remarry her, but then gave her his condition, which I did not quite understand because I don't get to see every episode. And then Claire stabbed him with a letter opener? I tell you, I thought I was going to fall out of my chair. If I'd been Claire, I'd have simply said, no thank you. Some of the things these characters get up to in Mrs. Whitaker's stories, you do not want to know. We do this until my mother calls to say it's time for dinner. After dinner, I go over to get Buster and it's back outside again. Buster and I can hear the kids playing elsewhere in the neighborhood, playing loudly as the mosquitoes come out to feast. I suspect they play games like hide and seek, kick the can, and spud. I do not care for these games. As my mother has said, speed is not my forte. When the mosquitoes are too thick, we each go home and get ready for bed. And that is what a typical summer day with Buster is like. Do you see what I did there, Michael Collins? I told you all that in the present tense, or as best I could. So you would feel like you were there and it was happening right now. Did it work? Sincerely yours, Mammy.